Okay, uh, Sue and I are in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, near New Hope, and Zoom has opened up a whole new world for us. We used to be able to only do these programs within an hour drive of where we live. And now we're in Long Island. This is really great. Um, I tell people when I'm a, I'm a home downsizing consultant, and when I tell them that, people have no idea what it is that I do. I give this glassy eyed look and they have no idea what I do. So I say, all right, let me explain it this way. I'm an appraiser. I help people understand the value of what they own. And I'm an auctioneer. I help them turn what they no longer want or need in cash. And then they kind of get a little glimmer, but I say, let me take it a step further. What I do is I go up to my clients' houses, I look at anything they want me to look at, and I do two things. We talk value, we talk options. I try to get them going in the general direction for those things they no longer want or need. And the usual response I get is very favorable. Thank you, because we don't know what most of our stuff is worth. And that's what we deal. We deal with households where you know some of it's good, you know some of it's junk, but there's some stuff in between. And that's generally what we deal with. Now, when someone hires me to come out to their house, the first question I ask them has three parts. And that's why I'm going to ask you guys right now. I want you to think about the things you might be interested in selling. Are you looking for the most amount of money? Do you want to do the least amount of work? Or do you have to get rid of it in the shortest amount of time? Most money, least work, shortest amount of time. And you can't say all three, which is what most people normally say. The worst position to find yourself in is the shortest amount of time. Uh, one time Sue and I had to deal with someone. She was an older woman. Uh, her husband had passed. She called me on a Thursday saying she had to be out of her house on Saturday. What could we do? She couldn't deal with it, okay? She was a hard situation for her. Uh, but we're seeing it more and more commonly now because the real estate market is so good. Mortgage rates are low. Houses around us are selling very quickly. People are saying, Mike, we just put the house in the market so fast than we thought. We got to be out. What do we do? So the worst position to find yourself in is the shortest amount of time. Most people say, well, of course, we want the most amount of money for our things. And I say, if you want the most amount of money, you have to be willing and able to do the most amount of work. You have to polish it, clean it, repair it. You have to have that garage sale three, four, five weekends until it's gone. You've got to take it to the church or the synagogue bazaar. You've got to stand outside the flea market. You've got to put it on eBay, pack it and ship it. You have to put it on Craigslist. You have strangers coming into your house to look at it. In 95% of the time when I say that, people say, I don't want strangers coming into my house. Tell me about the options with the least amount of work. So the usual cycle is this. If you're getting rid of a fair amount of things, you're going to decide what you want to keep. Then you usually offer it up to family, friends, kids, things like that. Then the next step is either you look for someone to buy it privately or you send it to the auctioneer. I'll come back to both of those things. When you don't want it, the kids don't want it, you can't find an auctioneer to sell for, you can't find a buyer. The next step is usually just donate it. And when they're not willing to take it for free, that's when you bring in one and guy junk or somebody like that. Okay, that's the usual cycle for dealing with, <clears throat> with things around the house. If you think you're going to use an auctioneer, okay, auction's great for some things, and I'm an auctioneer, I know the auction business, but auction's not great for everything. Uh, most auctioneers for general household things are going to charge you a 35, 25 to 35 percent commission, okay? That's number one, you're going to pay a commission. Number two, that commission does not include a pickup fee. So if you've got a box of glass, some art, some jewelry, some things like that, you put it in your car, you're driving there, that's fine. But if you find yourself selling an estate or cleaning out a house or downsizing and you have a house full of things, oftentimes by the time you pay that 35% commission and the movie room or pickup fee, there's no money left. So I spend more time telling people don't send it to auction rather than I do tell them to send it to auction. But thirdly, the auctioneer is going to sell at what's called absolute auction, no minimums, no reserves. You may want $500 on it, but if it's going for five bucks that day, that's all you get. And you're still going to pay a commission on it, and you're going to still pay the delivery fee. So uh, again, auction is right for some things. It's not right for everything. That's part of what I do is I tell people if I think it's auctionable or not. Uh, we all think someone's going to like it as much as we do. We think someone's going to treasure it. I guarantee you that's rarely going to happen. Most people are not going to pay you the full retail price. Most people you sell to are probably going to pay you a wholesale price because they're going to be the dealer that's going to do the work and incur the expenses that you don't want to incur. So 
uh, hopefully you find someone to pay your retail price. It's probably not going to happen. Let me throw out three words to you. Price, cost, value. Value, cost, price. They sound like they mean the same thing, but there's one very important difference. Price is a fact. You go into a shop, you go into a show, and you see a cut glass bowl priced at $250. That price is a fact. You say to the dealer, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, I know you're asking $250. I'll give you $175 cash right now. And the dealer says, okay, I'll take it. Your cost is $175. You get that home, what's its value? Its value is not $175. What you pay for something, this is an important thing to take out of this, what you paid for something has no value, no bearing on value today, okay? Value is going to be determined by what someone's going to be willing to make. Now, show of hands, how many of your kids want your things? You're looking at it, guys. There's no hands going up. The kids don't want this stuff. So that is really going to be the determination of value today. I got one hand going up. Dara Pratt, is the, he's going up. If, if your kids want it, you're lucky. Okay, most kids don't want this stuff. So that's going to be the primary determinant of value today. Is there crossover collectability? If the younger generation is interested in it, you got a good chance of getting some fair, fair money back. If they're not interested, probably not. And that's part of what we're going to be discussing tonight. Uh, so most money, least amount of work, shortest amount of time. Uh, price, cost, value. Value is not a fact. Value is a subjective number. There are different kinds of value, okay? As an appraiser, three most common types of value I'm asked to give. Number one, insurance replacement cost. If your house were to burn down, what would the insurance company pay you if it was lost, damaged, destroyed, or stolen? That number's up here. That's a high number, okay? Because the whole purpose of insurance is not to make you rich. It's to make you whole again. Uh, if you were to ask me to do an estate appraisal for your family, if you were to get divorced and I had to do a divorce appraisal, if you wanted to donate something to the library or a museum and take a tax write off, we don't use insurance replacement costs. We use fair market value. What's a reasonable price for it? Okay, but most people in your situation at these events, you don't care about insurance replacement costs. You don't care about fair market value. You generally want to know uh, what you could flip it for. What's the liquidation value? So as I go through here, what number do you want me to give you? Do you want me to make you feel good and give you an inflated number? Or you want me to give you a realistic number? I usually use fair market value, if that's okay with you. If you want something else, let me know. And then the last question I ask before I get started is, do you want me to sugarcoat it or do you want it right between the eyes? It's usually somebody that goes like this. Come on, no one's telling you, give it to me between the eyes. It's ugly out there. I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's pretty ugly for most things. Some things are hot. Uh, and so I'm here to be honest with you tonight. I'm not here to buy anything. And you always have that, that comfort. Uh, the appraiser should not try to buy anything from you. So with that said, Jay, I'm ready to go. And I guess, Sue, are you picking out our first victim? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go with Dara. Uh, why don't you unmute and show us what you've got? All right, now, guys, just so you're clear what I'm doing here, uh, I've got a 32-inch monitor, and so I'm going to Dara's uh, cube up there, and I'm pinning her. So she's now my whole screen. So I can see you pretty good there. And what you're going to show me. How are you doing? Hello. Good, how are you? Guys? So I'm actually here with my dad, and we have... Well, what we actually have, we have three papers. One's Newsday, one is Daily News, and the other is also Daily News. And this one here that I'm showing you now, it caps the war. World War II. World, okay, yep. During World War II. To give you an idea of what's going on with it, I, know I, do, I do have some earmarks here. And what I wanted to do, you know, I wanted fair market value on, you, on it because I wanted to donate it, to be honest with you, to uh, a museum. museum. Okay. I don't know if you can see all this. Yeah. I mean, what it is, is it's a newspaper that's been taken apart. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah, so and put, in, put in a binder. Original newspaper, you have every single page or just that's, select pages. No, no, every single page. Okay. <laughs> 
if you were to ask me to appraise this for fair market value, what's a reasonable price? I would probably say in the vicinity of $100. I think I can justify that uh, to anybody. Okay. But I do a whole different presentation. Jay, you might have seen it. I do a presentation called 25 Categories Guaranteed to Disappoint You When It Comes Time to Selling Them. <laughs> in old newspapers okay. are one of them. Because everybody saved World War II. Everybody saved JSK, JFK assassinated. Uh, Space Shuttle Challenger explodes. Nixon impeached. Yeah. I mean, all of those things. Nobody threw those newspapers away. So they're not that rare. So okay. the first question before you go and spend any money on an appraisal is I would find a museum and ask them if they wanted this as a donation. You know, I did exactly that. I went to the museum, but I did not have the newspapers with me. Okay. And the guy, he directed me to a wheelbarrow, which was filled with newspapers from World War II. <laughs> and he said whatever they, they wanted, they could get off the internet. And, you know, that to me, that's crazy. You're not looking at the, the honest to God real thing that they have, you know, in, in the museum, they have tanks from World War II. Why not a paper? I, I, I hear you, sir, except the realistic thing is, unless they're going to use it, museums only want things that are central to their main theme. Mm -hmm. And okay. probably 75% of a museum's assets or acquisitions are kept in storage where the storage has to be climate control, et cetera, et cetera. So they only want select things. And right. so if you, I would go to them and say, do you want this newspaper? And would you take this donation? If they say yes, fine. Don't pay me $200 to give you $100 appraisal on it. Just take a $100 tax write off on it. And I, you, I don't think you're gonna get in trouble for that. Um, right. A, a, there's there's a kind of a scale thing. So as long as you don't declare more than a couple hundred dollars, you probably be okay yeah you know, i just kind of wanted to make my mark because it's better off there than under my bed for the last 40 years that's and, exactly and, where this has been and yet what you're saying is an attitude that most museums they don't want anything they don't want just anything uh, because it has, <laughs> like uh, right now sue and i are in doylestown pa we have the michener museum okay michener does not want modern art because that doesn't fit into their theme. They're more 19th right. century colonial things like that. So if you wanted to donate to them a barrel that was advertising something for Bucks County PA, they would love that. But if it right. doesn't fit the collection, they don't want to pay them for the storage if they're not going to use it. So that would, my advice would be find someone who wants it. And if they're willing to accept it and give you a receipt, you will need a receipt. They won't tell you what it's worth. You've got to put your own number on it. But right. get, photograph what you're giving them, get a written receipt, give it to them, you're done, take a small tax write off, problem solved. Okay. But we just papers are not research. a hot commodity today like that. Thank you very okay. much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on. I, sorry, but I don't have your name, but it says iPad 2 in a maroon colored blouse. You have to unmute there, dear. Unmute. She's working on it. Can't hear you yet. Lower left corner, if you can hear us. You, there's lower, a lower, lower left, left corner. Toolbar. But she's on an iPad. She's probably on an iPad or a uh, cell phone. I unmuted us. iPad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unmute. Oh, there you go. There you go. Got it. Go. Very good. Okay. Hi. Hi there. Is your name really iPad? No. <laughs> What's your name? No, it's Carol Amato. Hi, Carol. What do you got for me tonight? Well, we have this, uh, it's a Nimba, uh, a mask from uh, Guinea. And I won it in 1984 at an Urban League dinner. And um, I'm just wondering about it. It's, a, it's an authentic mask. It's, uh, but I can't find any information on it or anything that looks like this. Okay, well, why don't you focus on that so we can see it? Because right now, I'm looking at the cabinet Oops. behind you. Oh, now I lost you. Oh, gosh. 
I'm not sure how to get you back. Look in the lower left corner where your mute button is. There you go. You're back. It's okay. Okay. Now, yeah, this is perfect. The... Stop there. Stop there. That's perfect. I see. Oh. An, I see an ugly face. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Right. It's hand carved. Where do you think it's from? Um. It's. Oh God. The Simo Society, Northern Baga. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. And you won, it, you won it in a raffle? Yes, it was in a National Urban League, um, a fundraiser. And uh, this was the second prize. And at that time, I was offered $500 by someone who wanted it, but uh, I decided to keep it. But now, I don't know. I think I'd like to, uh, you know sell it or see. I, I mean, it looks like a special piece. I mean, it's all hand yes. carved, one of a kind, it's fairly large. Was it ever exhibited in a museum? Was it de-assessed by a museum yeah. by chance? Right, it was donated at the time by the uh, Shabaka Collection in New York City. Do you have a receipt attesting to that? Yes. If you have a receipt that this was, was it exhibited in the museum or was it sold from their gift department? Uh, that I don't know. You see what I, I'm saying? If this was an authentic piece from the indigenous people, if yeah. it was used in the daily life, it was something really special, that's going to be worth a lot more than if it was just something from the gift shop that yeah. any piece that was machine produced, anybody could bought. I mean, right. To me, it's an it's a great piece. Yes. But how many people are going to want it? The hard part is finding someone who wants this. So uh, it's probably too big to sell on eBay. But you've got a receipt for it, right? Yes. You've got the receipt. Right. I mean, to me, to the right person, it's going to be worth five hundred to a thousand dollars or more because wow. it's not what we call provenance. It's nicely yeah. done. Would I give you 10 bucks for it? No, because it doesn't fit <laughs> my decor. So it's, right. what I would do, I would go back to the museum and see if they could help you liquidate this because they probably have a bevy of people who collect this kind of stuff. That's what I was trying to find out where I could find a, a list of collectors or something. I tried to locate this uh, Shabaka collection, but I, on the internet, but I can't seem to find any information. They may not be there anymore, but you I should know. be able to find it in Google. If they close, you should be able to find it. Then, uh, if you can't find it, then I would take some pictures of the entire thing, front, back, bottom, send them right. off to a couple museums who specialize okay. in this kind of thing. The the museum cur curators can look at this, they can tell you where it was from, when it's from, et cetera. They will not discuss value with you generally. Curators uh -huh. are not there to talk value. They're generally there to discuss uh, aesthetics, uh, originality, things like that. But maybe they can steer you in the right direction where there's a group of people or some individuals who collect this kind of thing. The yes. problem is this would be too big. To, to, it'd be expensive to ship it on eBay, for example. Right. So right. I would start with some local museums and see what they could help you with. To me, five hundred to a thousand dollars, but maybe worth more for all I know. Very good, thank you. Thank, thank you. Cute piece. Thank you, Carol. Um, okay, moving on. Let's go to Helen. I'm sorry, Ellen Hald. Go ahead and unmute. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Hi. I have a. Um, it is a, a a tea service. Yep. Um, but it was originally a set of um, a service for six and along the way one of each item did break so it's really service for five but um each piece is is apparently hand painted and signed by the um i can't see that can you read the, i see where it's signed but i can't read can you tell me who signed it yes it is um a, capital A, with a little V up top, Hennegar. Spell the last name? H-E-N-N-I-G-A-R. And 
one of the pieces. Give me one second, Alice. Sue, sure. if you're going to do a lookup, go. I would start with Google uh, and do that A Hennigar uh, lacquerware tea set or porcelain tea set. I'm sorry, Ellen, go ahead. Um, a few of the pieces, although they meant in every other way, this one, although he signed it also, is um, a Limoges piece with um, BNC um, and then I can't read the, the next word, but Limoges is in between them. Um, and he signed this one, which is from Bavaria, um, Motiondorf with a PM in a regal, um, like a vine-like surrounding it. This is making no sense to me, Ellen. Oh. Uh, and, and, the, and the reason, and I'm not, no, I'm not doubting you, but what I'm saying is it looks to be a matching set. Yeah. But it looks to me like it was, it looks like Japanese lacquerware. Really? Okay. That's what I would have thought it was. It's got that, 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 that glistening glow, the floor. Oh. But it's Limoges is France. So you're telling me one piece is from Limoges. Yeah. And then you're telling me another piece is from Bavaria. And yet he signed each piece. So something something doesn't make sense unless he bought the the, the main pieces and then he just designed it over and above that. Sue, are you finding anything on A Hennigard? Huh. No, nothing. Uh, nothing on Google. I, I'm not seeing it on Worth Point. I'm in Worth Point. I can't find anything. <laughs> so, I mean. It, it, it's, it looks lovely. How often do you use it? Never. Um, uh -huh. I, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I was given it, my, my uncle was uh, packing up his house. This had to be like 40, 40 some odd years ago. And he, <clears throat> he invited me and he said, take whatever you want. I didn't want to take anything, but I spotted the teapot and I was collecting teapots. So I said, oh, all right, I'll take the teapot, thanks. He said, I'll bring it out. But when he did bring it out to our house, the whole set was with it. And he said at the time, he thought it was an antique, but he had no background on it. So, I, you know, that didn't go anywhere. My gut tells me mid 1900s, 1960, yeah. 1960, somewhere like that. That's my gut without being able to touch it. But to me, the market value, the, here, you never used it, you said. No one else is going to use it. It's the kind of thing that sits yeah. in the charm closet and, and, and people look at it. Yeah. So the resale value is not nearly what it was because our mother's generation liked this stuff more than our kids' generation. Yeah. So I could be easily appraise this fair market value $100, $150. That's, that's not a problem. But I would caution you if you went to sell this at an auction, you would probably be lucky to get 50 bucks. Really? Unless, unless the right two people were there. Huh. Now, let me, this again, this is this learning experience is for everyone. You have this tea set and you absolutely love it. You could price it at $500. Remember I said, value is not a fact. It's a subjective number. You could price this at $500 and I'm interested in it. So I look at it, I say, I've got three choices. I can pay your $150 or $500 I could turn around and walk away from the transaction, or I can make you a counter offer and we negotiate. Okay. Either way, you control the situation. And if you don't like my offer, you still own it at the end of the day. Make sense? Mm -hmm. The minute you send this to auction, you lost control of the selling situation. Yeah. What's the number one reason people go to auctions? To get, get a bargain. bargain. Get a bargain. They want to pay as little as they can. So if Sue and I, my wife and I, we're not married at this time, but we both are interested in it. Sue's willing to pay $500 and I'm willing to pay 50 bucks because I can flip it at the flea market for a hundred. And no one else wants it that day because that's all you're selling is the people who are there that day. She's willing to pay 500, I'm willing to pay 50. What does she have to pay to get it? Yeah. yeah. Plus one bid. You see what I'm saying? Right. I, mean, I was willing to pay 400, and she was willing to pay 500. She'd have to pay 410 or four and a quarter. So what's happened is with fewer and fewer people interested in this kind of stuff today, the values dropped. And it's what we call a shallow market. 
Not that many in the younger generation want to own an Asian tea set. So there's not as much demand for it as before. Right. Market value, $150. Uh, resale value, maybe 50 bucks, unless you can get more. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Hey, thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, I think you might be Sandra. With a, okay, there you go. <laughs> go ahead and unmute. Lower left on your. Oh, there we go, <laughs> Sandra. Okay, how you doing there? Okay, um, I really have two things that were both for my grandmothers, and I'm kind of toyed which one to ask you. So I'll just show it to you in whichever you pick. Um, they're over 50 years old. This looks like gold plate. Gold on the dish. Okay. And it does say Bavaria. Okay, Bavaria in China. Yep. It says Thomas, I don't know. And this, my mother always said, my grandfather bought it. It's an ugly bird. <laughs> What's um, the working on the bottom, on, on the underside? It just says Italy engraved in it. Okay. Uh, the story was, which my mother's a master storyteller, at the 1939 World's Fair in New York, my grandfather bought it for my grandmother. I don't, okay. I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> okay, I, I want to do them both because I'm not doing two things. I'm just going to do them together. Okay. Your okay. First, your first said they're 50 years old. 50 I'm, years old is not 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 old. 50 years old was 1971. Oh, so, these things are probably older than that. Okay, but my point is, just because something's 50 years old doesn't make it real old. Okay. Uh, the gold leaf plate. It, it probably is the kind of thing that would sit up on a, on a shelf somewhere, okay? Uh, you're going to get $15, $20 for it at auction today. Wow. That's it. Okay. And then the bird, yes, there are some collectors of birds, but there's lots of other birds out there. There's beam birds. There's stangle birds. There's royal Dalton birds. And the market on those has declined just as much as it has for plates, the younger generation generally doesn't want it. And I'm not saying nobody wants it, but they've dropped. So Sue and I have had some stangle birds that used to go for $250 that we're lucky to get $25, $35. The market's that bad. So I'm not really interested in the value to get rid of it because it's something from my from my okay. grandmother and my grandfather. It's really the history of it. Um, and if it really is what it is or not, or my mother just is a great storyteller. Italian pottery generally is not that collectible because it's lighter. It's not that well made. It's not like stoneware. Uh, right. if, if you notice how the flowers on that, on the bottom of that are like, they're flowers. They're, they're in relief. Okay. They're what we call capo di monte. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Versus they're not painted flowers. They're, they're literally almost, they're glass flowers. Are there any chips to them? No. And the only thing is, I wonder if it really is from the World's Fair in 1939. It could be. It very well could be. There was they sold a lot of things there in, in 1939, but it, it doesn't have any connection to the 39 World's Fair. If it said souvenir of the 1939 World's Fair, souvenir of such and such a pavilion, it would be a collectible. It would be collectible to someone who collects the 39 World's Fair. Donald Brian Johnson is a national columnist. He just did a national article on the 39 World's Fair. Another group of people I know just did uh, Jimmy Bucci and Barbara Bean just did column on the 64 New York, New York World's Fair. There are more collectors of the 64 World's Fair than the 39. Why? They did. There's more was alive. That's exactly right. So like fair market value on each, I'd say $50. Okay. And okay. is there any way to tell if this is really gold that my mother? Gold. I, I'm sorry, good question. It's definitely not gold. It's gold paint. Even if sometimes you'll see on the back of these piece of porcelain, it'll say 22 carat, 24 carat. It's right. It was a marketing term. It's just you cannot take that to a jeweler or a we buy gold store and cash it in for the gold. It just it's paint. Well, the dish is quite pretty. Um, exactly. You no, know, it is quite pretty. Um, but like you said, I don't know if my children would ever want any of these things or not because they didn't really know my their great grandparents. That happens. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank hey, next you. Up. Uh, next one, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Uh, let me just tell you briefly. This, 
this is taken from a, a, a life jacket of, of, of a survivor from the ship Juan Cassiano. And it, it's all carved and it has uh, 11 survivors rescued by USS Argo, October 20th, 1944. Let me stop you for a minute. What's the boat again? The Juan what now? What's the name of it? Juan C A S as in Sam, I A N as in Nancy O. Okay. And all the information is carved. Okay. No, so go ahead, keep going. Okay, so that it says October 20th, 1944 at 2110 GCT, six convoy, the wind was 85 miles per hour, C number seven, rescue took place during a hurricane. Keep and all, the 11 survivors are listed, all the names. Sue, see if you can find anything on Worth Point. I'm just in Google right now. I'm in Wikipedia. The SS Juan Cassiano was a Mexican tanker that was lost during a gale in the Atlantic 90 miles off Savannah, Georgia, 1944, just like you said. Mm -hmm. It was traveling from Mexico to New York City. Is this... Can you hold it up? Is it, is it a piece of wood that's carved? It's it part of the life jacket. Well, I mean, how could it be part of the life also, jacket? Also wood? I mean, how could it be? It, all right, so it's, it's, it was after the fact someone did this. Yeah. But it was taken from the life jacket of a survivor. Okay, but bear with me here. This was not on the life jacket until after they were rescued. Because they wouldn't have known who's who's rescued, right? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we're I don't know if we're communicating here. I mean, I what I think what you're saying is it's a piece of a life jacket from the Juan uh, Cassiano. Right, from a survivor. Some, and it's it was taken later, from a survivor. But at some later date, someone added the survivors to that piece of a life jacket. Is that, am I saying it right? I don't know anything about it. I don't know any details. It was my grandfather's. Sue, are you finding anything? No, I'm not. Uh, can I see the piece again where it says, can, I'm just, uh, because it's not coming up when, can you just say something also so I, it comes up in speaker view? Oh, what, you want me to say? Can you say it? Just put it down a little bit so I can see the top of it. Sure, can you pin her? Okay. Yeah, I'm not finding anything, sorry. No? If, if, you, if this said Titanic, it would be worth a lot more money than the Juan Cassiano. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, I don't, if, if I had a relative living or deceased on the Juan Cassiano, that would have an immense amount of value to me. Mm -hmm. But to anyone else, who would care? Unless someone collects ocean liner memorabilia, something like that. Are you looking to sell it? Are you looking to insure it? What are you looking to do with it? No, I'm going to keep it. I just wanted to know if there was any value. Like I said, I think it would be a lot more value for the Titanic or the Lusitania or some of the other more famous things. So many ships sank. And yet there's somewhere there's right. a collector of this kind of stuff out there. Uh, if you were to ask me to insure it for, uh, appraise it for insurance replacement costs, I could easily justify 250 to $500 because where are you going to get another one? An authentic right. a life jacket. But I would definitely caution you I don't know if you would come close to that in the, in the marketplace. And if you did want to sell it, I know you don't. If you do want to sell it, the number one place I would take that would be eBay. The reason okay. being is you could reach an international audience. There may be some relatives still alive in Mexico who lost relatives here who would want that as a memento for one reason or another. Uh, it's small, easy to ship, not that heavy. It would right. be a lot more to ship the woman's uh, carved statue 
then it would mm -hmm. be something like that. Uh, so okay. fair market value, $250, $350, somewhere like that. Um, okay. But it's a shallow, very shallow market when it comes to selling it. Okay? Thank you. Pretty cool piece, though. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, moving on to Laura. Uh, Laura Rossi, go ahead and unmute. Here we go. Hi. We get a two for here, right? We get you and your mom. Yes, my mom's here too. Um, actually, I'm going to bring you in the other room. I have a chest that I'm going to show you. Um, a trunk. Um, can you see it? Is that Louis Vuitton? It is. It is a Louis Vuitton trunk, and it has. Um, it's from the Roos brothers. It has the, I don't know if you can see that, the um, metal plate. It's kind of hard to see. I have my laptop here, but um, the inside is in nice condition. Um, pretty nice condition. Is it Mark Louis Vuitton? Yes, it is. And it, the Providence is, can you see or no? No, there we go. Stop, stop. There we go. Yes, yes. I see that clearly now. So it is Mark Louis Vuitton and the Providence, Providence is the Roos Brothers. I have looked it up a little bit and it was a big department store back, I forgot what year, but um, they're not in business any longer, but it was a big department store. And so are you, are you finding anything? It's pretty clean um, and it's quite large. Do me a favor. Uh, how do you spell Vuitton again? It's V-U-I-T-T-O-N. Uh, Say that again. V-U-I-T-T-O-N. Oh. Louis Vuitton gotcha. uh, sells for a lot of money. I was going to offer $10. <laughs> <laughs> we had a client one time who had Louis Vuitton pieces and they said they wouldn't even take them uh, luggage and they wouldn't even take them through the airport. They were that afraid of it being stolen. Yeah, I know the Providence with the um, Roos brothers is a big deal, is a big deal, I think, because it was... Um, Probably like Sweezy and Newins, but I think even a larger scale from what I understand. So, All right, but I'm it's. Gonna, a, I'm going to give you I'm, a couple of prices that Louis Vuitton trunks have sold for in 2020. Okay. $3,400, $1,600, $3,000, $10,000. Okay. $500, but that was a child's trunk. Uh, $2,000, 4800 so, I mean, you're up in that range. I'm, I'm going to say fair market value, five grand, uh, but you need to stamp someone else look at it. Very hot today. Uh, it, the condition looks to be great. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of thing I would say, yes, send that to an auction house because that's yep. the kind of thing that should be sold. If you're, if you're selling it, that's the kind of thing that should be sold in a competitive bidding situation because it's a relatively deep market, meaning a lot of people would be interested in owning that versus right. a shallow market where not that many people would. Sue, do my numbers conform to what you're looking at? What, sorry? Did my numbers conform to what you're seeing? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and this is, eBay is not the place for this, okay? Right. I would much rather sell this. I think there's an auction house on Long Island, Phil Weiss, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I've heard of them. I did sell um, a trunk. It was in. It was also a Louis Vuitton. I got it from the same place, and I sold that on eBay. And it was painted, and it was not in good shape. And I got nineteen hundred dollars for it. And it was half the size, and it was really not a good quality piece. And I did pick up only. Um, sometimes eBay, you you kind of luck out if you don't want to ship it, and there's yep. people local they'll you can do a pickup only and that's what i did so that was if you sell through like something like weiss or a reputable auction house okay, okay. they're gonna sell it online so it, it it's not going to be sold just in front of their auction attendees in that room that day it's going to be sold nationally and internationally so if someone right. afford ten thousand dollars for louis vuitton trunk 
they can afford the 500 bucks to have it shipped to wherever they're right. at. Right. Okay. Right. So that's a good item. Best item I've seen so far tonight. Yeah. Okay. Next and now mom, we're going to next to your mom, of course. Now we're well, now we're going to see my mother's, which I don't think is going to compare, but <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. This is the top. Can I see it back? Yeah. And what is it? It looks like a piece of stoneware, decorated it's, stoneware. It's an urn and it has you want to explain it does have numbers on it. Uh it's Three, three, do you want to explain it? You probably know more, but it says 3342 and 6L on the foot. And it looks like a huge soup terrain. Yeah, it's got the, the, six, the six L could mean six liters. Yeah, I think so. Somebody maybe said it was for beer, but I don't know. But it's it's got this uh opening, so that's it's for you know it's for the ladle. Work. The ladle would go ladle through there. For a ladle. But it's big. I don't see the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice piece. I'll take the Louis Vuitton trunk any day of the week. In terms of value. <laughs> in terms of value. Uh, it, 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 I'll ask you the question I keep asking everybody. When was the last time you used it? I didn't use it. <laughs> I all, know. We're all guilty of this. We have these things hanging up on a shelf. They're, they're in a display case. They collect dust. And you say to the kids, you want this, kids? And they say, no, what am I going to do? It's going to collect dust in my place. So quality piece, any chips on it? Uh, there is, uh, you can hardly, you, you, you can, this right here, right here, It's you can hardly feel it, but that is a chip. It is a little chip. It's yeah. like if a, a chip, I will find it in a minute. The <laughs> yeah. it's gonna like do a little, little. It's, it. it's a rough spot on yeah. the foot. The first yeah. thing any potential buyer is going to do is look for damage. And they're going to take yeah. that lid off because the lid is the most prone to be damaged from going in and out and in and out over the years. I know. So a fair market value, 50, 60 bucks, maybe a hundred, uh, but generally not that much. These things just aren't doing it unless it had the right name. Okay. And this one doesn't yeah. seem to have a name on it. I don't know the name. I just have those numbers. That's all six liter, I guess, then it is. That's what three, my guess three, is. Four, nine, it says. Three, yeah. three, four, nine. Yeah. Uh, fair market value, $100. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good luck That's with the phone. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Next is Philip. Go ahead and unmute. Okay. Philip, thank, you for taking your, thank you for taking your tie off. I feel much more comfortable there. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm more comfortable too. Yeah. What do you got for us? Uh, well, it's a watch I bought. Can you put your sound down? Uh, this Hold is a watch I bought. Hold it up if you could. Okay. It's a watch I bought around Nixon's uh, demise when he left office. Okay. Can you turn your sound down. All right. Um, it's, it's uh, used to, the, the eyes used to go back and forth when the clock ran, when the watch ran. And it says, uh, I'm not a crook. And Nixon, and uh, I think there's a date on here too. Nixon says, I'm not a crook. And the eyes would go back and forth when the watch <laughs> ran. Watch doesn't run anymore. So I actually want to know, is it worth anything, number one? And number two, should I take it to a watch repair place? Because would it be more valuable if it still worked? Does it have yeah. sentimental value to you? Was it your father's, grandfather's? So it's not, does it have sentimental value or is it just a watch? It's just a watch I purchased. Um, it was, I think, I think there are a number of them out there. Um, Did you buy it on a street corner in New York? No, I bought it from some kind of article I think I saw on the, in, I don't know, not the internet. You know, well, that wasn't around. Okay. But, so what uh, are you on eBay? Well, I'm finding huh? uh, the watches and uh, I'm on eBay sold prices. And, uh, it, you know, one uh, sold in February for $20. But then there was one that's also sold uh, for, it's actually... Uh, they had it listed at 95 and they took best offer accepted. So they don't tell you exactly what it is 
that they accepted, but it, it could have been 90, it could have been 85, 80, 75, uh, but there was another one uh, listed at 75, also best offer accepted. So, you know, uh, some pretty respectable prices. But just so you understand, ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing is Sue and I subscribe to a bunch of these pay websites because we're looking for comps. If you're gonna put your house for sale, the realtor is not gonna pick a number out of the air. They're gonna look for comps, what your house sold for recently. So that's what we look for in terms of these things. Now, uh, I'm looking in a, a worth, website called WorthPoint. Nixon, I'm not a crook watch, sold January 20th, 2020, 10 bucks. Ford, <laughs> Ford, Nixon, I'm not a crook watch, is sold in 2017 for 20 bucks, $5 each. Uh, I'm looking at another one in 2017, $10. So that seems to be going to range somewhere between $10 and $75, which is what Sue's saying. But you said yours is not working. Well, I think most of them I've seen on eBay don't work. But my yeah, question yeah. is, should I, would it be worth it to me to take it to a watchmaker and see if they could get it to work? My advice would be if you're going to keep it because it has sentimental family value, then you pay to do it. But if you're going to pay to fix it up so you could resell it, in my opinion, you would not get your repair cost back out of it. So I would just let it go the way it is. You think it would appreciate in value? No. If, like if I, I think there were so many of those out there that what you're looking at is right around what we're talking about unless the watch was by chance 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold. No. If it's no. a watch, I don't think it's going to go up. I really don't. Okay. But it's All not right. worth telling you. So just tuck it back into the jewelry drawer and reassess it in five years. All right. I have another item, but I'll wait for my turn. I'm sorry? I have another thing I wanted to ask about, but I'll... Okay, we're going to see if we get through everybody or not. We'll see. But thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Philip. Okay, moving on to Paul. I'll go ahead and unmute. I'm using my uh, iPad. I've never done the Zoom on an iPad before, so it's a little different. Uh, I have an item that uh, I'll show you. It's a Chinese, I think it's a Chinese table from uh, when I bought it on, at an auction. Uh, nobody was bidding on it. And I thought it was this pretty scandalous thing not to do. So I put a bid on it and I got it. Uh, it was the minimum bid. So uh, I was told on the bill of sale, it says it was Chinese from mid 19th century. But other than that, I really know nothing about it. This is the, the table, okay, the so top the of the table. The work on the table, is it inlaid? It's not inlaid, no, it's just painted. Okay. All right, can and I it's see got it on the sides, it's carved on the sides, whether it's carved or carved, I don't know. Can I see the underside? Can you flip it over for me by chance? Yeah, you're gonna have to give me a minute for that. I gotta take the glass top off. All right, never mind. Don't 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 do that. Uh, I don't remember that there was anything on the bottom. See what chance. I what I look for is does the underside, and you don't have to do it now, but does the underside look like it's 19th century? You know, what uh, yeah. Wood ages with what we call patina. Right. And I've seen too many of these pieces where, you know, they, they look nice, but you look at the underside and they look brand new, like they just came out of the Bombay store. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a nice decorative piece. I, I really can't give you a fair market value here because I can't lift it up and look at all, all aspects. It looks oh, like if you want to see the table. bottom, I will gladly do that. <laughs> all right, let's go. That. If you can do it quickly, let me just see. I want okay, to see hold on. There. Are we almost there? We are there. Okay, that's the bottom. I mean, to me, that I got to be honest, that does not necessarily look like it's 125 or 150 years old. Uh, 
but I'm not getting a great look at it. It looks like it's been painted. It does look like it does have uh, some sort of a lacquer on it. And they perhaps. usually didn't finish the undersides of tables. So uh, what I'm gonna do is number, number one, I'm gonna say, get a second, get another opinion. I'm looking at the table here. I'm gonna say maybe fair market value, 250 bucks. But it could, well, that's still a lot more than I paid for it. Okay. If it's <laughs> so, truly and I do like the table. Century, so it could be worth more. Get another opinion by someone who knows Asian furniture and who can see it. I, I don't know. It doesn't look to me to be 19th century, but it could. Yeah. I would say fair market value, two hundred fifty dollars. Okay, that's, that's thank you. That's good. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, and let's go to B Boss. What's your name? Oh wait. Oh, there you are. And what is your name? Can't Not hear you. Hearing you. It looks like you're unmuted, but I can't hear what you're saying. Give it another try. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. You had it unmuted. There you go. Now. Jay, why don't we go on to someone else while she's trying to rectify that? All right. Wait, is she saying anything or? I know she, it looks like she's unmuted, but. the Her microphone may not be working, period. Um... Can you uh, show us what you have and, and speak about it? And we can see if you can, we can pick up the tone. Jay, we need to move on, buddy. And we can come back here. I, I'm just not seeing anything. Okay, so yeah, if you a want. Bad connection. Yeah. Yeah, I was, we're not hearing anything, sorry. But we'll come back to you. We can circle back, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, moving on to Mary Grace. Meluso? I don't, so there we go. Go ahead and unmute. Have to unmute. Oh, I'm sorry, there we go, there we go. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I have, um, let me show you. It is, it's a, uh, uh, signed baseball, 1986 Mets. How did you acquire it? Uh, it was, I think it was given to me as a gift. What Do team you have is it? Any reason to doubt its authenticity? Uh, no, no, because I'm looking. It, it, the the signatures are, you know, these are actual. I assume they're actual signatures of the players, the 1986 Mets. But I mean. Did you know someone who worked in the locker room? Oh, uh, no, no, this, no, this was, this was not, um, no, that it, it, it looks, it looks a little like it was also, uh, I don't know, it's old. I don't know if, if the discoloration is from the age or if it was like a, a game ball that they all signed. I mean, I'm looking at it. It's, it's really hard to, to me to tell you what's there. How many right. signatures are on it? I believe it's, I, I, I was told it was all the signatures. Okay, they, usually the rosters had 25 people plus a manager. So you'd be talking about 25. Yeah, there's yeah. not to be that many signatures on here. I mean, I'm in Worth Point right now, Sue, and I, I just put a 1986 Mets signed baseball and I'm seeing uh, 206 bucks, November 26, 2020. Uh, but I don't know, I don't think all 25 signatures are on it. Uh, here's what you want to do. Are you looking to sell it, insure it? What are you trying to do with it? Um, well, I I'd like to keep it, so insure it. Okay. 
insure it for 500 bucks. Okay. But what I would do if what they're doing with these things is right now, let's say you wanted to sell it to me. Okay. I'm naturally going to say, how do I know you didn't sign any of those signatures? How can you prove it to me? Okay. Well, there's a way you can prove it. And it might cost you 50 bucks, but you can go to what they call a grading and authentication company. Okay. You send that baseball to a company and they will charge you maybe 50 bucks. And they will look at the signatures and then they will say, give, they'll give me two opinions. Number one, they will say, in our opinion, every signature on here is authentic. Mm -hmm. Number two, in our opinion, on a scale of one to 10, these signatures rate an eight out of 10, okay? Meaning some are dirty and some are incomplete and all that other stuff. Then what they do is they will encapsulate it in a, in a little stand. So hands necessarily can't touch it again. Then when you go to sell that, you can put that on eBay or you sell it to a prospective buyer where it says PSA authenticated and guaranteed eight, eight on a scale of one to 10. That's how you guarantee it. Because uh, okay. if, if you give it to me, nobody knows me from a hill of beans, really. They don't know you from a hill of beans, but everybody recognizes the grading services. So to me, that's the way you would get the most amount of money. I, I wasn't a big Mets fan, so I'm not sure who the big players were then but one or two autographs are generally going to mean more than the rest. Right. A lot of times team balls aren't worth as much as individually signed balls like Babe Ruth. Right. A, babe, a ball signed only by Babe Ruth would generally bring more money than a ball signed by the 1926 Yankees, for example. Okay. So there's, there's degrees. Was that ball used in a game? Okay. Or did some kid bring it that he bought it at Kmart and he had them sign it? Was it uh, Ron Cranepool's 100th home run ball? I mean, all of these things come into play uh, in terms of determining value. But not having access to any of that, I would say fair market value, 500 bucks. And the baseball market is hot today. Right. Orange okay. Balls, everything else. So good luck with it. All right. Thank you. Thank is, you. Is there, is, um, is, is there a way I can find out? Uh, how to get in touch with these um, grading agencies? Just go into, uh, just Google baseball grading agencies. Or okay, grading cool. Companies. Uh, and and they're, they're, they, they grade, right now they grade, for example, coins. One company grades coins, stamps. They'll grade bats. They'll, I mean, the key thing is to get that authentication. They can even sometimes now do uh, game used verification. You know, like the Yankees. Let's say the Yankees have the pinstripes. Well, right. every year, the uniform was a little different. Pinstripes are a little bigger, a little farther apart, this and that. There's ways that these companies can say, okay, this was definitely a 1927 Babe Ruth game used jersey, and this is the game we think he used it in. These guys are that slick. You pay for the service, but boy, does that help increase the value if you've got something really good. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next is Tony. And you'll need to unmute. Hey, Tony, what do you got for us? Okay. Uh, my dad had these uh, miniature um, Viking figures uh, in a shoe. Well, hold it back a little bit, Tony, because you're a little blurry. Hold it back. There you go. That's good. Okay. okay. And they've been in a shoe box in a closet for over 60 years. They were they all say, wrapped up in tissue paper. Do they say Britons on the underside by chance? Um, it says uh, made in France and made in South Africa. Okay, so they're definitely not Britons. I have uh, a total of about 20 of them. Sue, so I'm not sure what to tell you. I'm gonna say just called Viking figurines made in South Africa. What was the other made in France you said? Yes. And are they all uh, knights? They're in mint, con almost mint condition. They've been wrapped up in tissue paper in a shoe box in a closet for over 60 years. And I also have some German soldiers. What are you going to do with these things? Sell them? Insure them? Um, I wanted to find out what they were worth, yeah. They're in beautiful condition. I hate to get rid of them, but 
I have no use for them. Also, some German soldiers made in Germany. What are they made of? Uh, the Vikings, they feel like they're lead figures. They're like very what? heavy. Lead. They're lead. very heavy. Okay. But there's no company name on it. No maker name. No. It just says France and uh, S. Africa. I mean, Sue, I put in, I'm in North Point. I just put in made in South Africa Viking figures, for lack of a better term. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of Viking figures that are in the 10 to $15 range. Uh huh. That's what they seem to be going for. Are you finding anything more or less than that, Sue? Well, I found the, the uh, a company in um, uh, France, uh, I think it's GB, and uh, they're selling the new ones for $65 each. And okay, but what you need to understand, Tony, is that those are new dealer asking prices. Logic would say the older ones should bring more than the new ones. Right. especially if they're in mint condition. But what you're doing is if you buy those at $65, you're buying them in what's called the primary market, but you're selling in a secondary market. So it's the question becomes how many people want to collect those things yeah. uh, today? Where's the best place to sell them? So are you seeing anything on eBay at all? Well, I'm uh, seeing uh, uh, there's one uh, made in France. Uh, M-I-G-N-O-T, Huns. And there was a rider on a horse that sold for just $19. Uh -huh. uh, there's been, there's soldiers, but these are more Vikings, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I didn't find anything on Vikings. What I would do, Tony, is I would put one up. Okay? Just okay. don't put them all up and describe what you know about it. If you are correct, you'll probably see some bids. If you're incorrect, someone out there who specializes in this stuff is going to correct you, okay? That would be fine. <laughs> That's free, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's free advice. So yeah. there's always a, when Sue and I used to set up at an antique show, and if we didn't know what something was or we didn't know what it was worth, it was not uncommon. We'd price it at $1,500. And somebody would come by and say, what are you asking $1,500 for? It's a $25 piece, and here's why. Okay? We keep it at $1,500, and 10 minutes later, someone else would come by and say the same thing. Guess what we then did? Well, we lowered yeah. the price to 35 bucks, and we got free advice from people. Yeah. So that's that's why we try that. Without a name, in this business, collectors collect the name. Yeah. And without a name, you're looking at Viking figurines that are in good shape. Is anybody going to play with them today? Well, I hope not, because if they play with them, they're going to break them. Yeah, really. So then they're just going to be sitting on a shelf, and we come back to that same thing. So uh, if you want to sell them, try one, not all of them. See what kind of response you get. Price it, 15, 16 bucks. If it goes quickly, then you know you got something. If yeah. it doesn't go, then you, you, you know you're too high. That's what I would do with those. All right. Just one on, on the German soldiers made in Germany. Back it up. Right now it's too blurry. I need you to back it up. Okay. Is that World War I? I'm not I sure. They were know. in the same box. <laughs> same thing, though? No name on it? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, looks like L-I-O-E-O-L, -E Germany. What is it? Spell it again. Uh, let me see. I have it It's L I N E O L Germany. Oh, it's Lionel. No. Is that Lionel? Doesn't look like Line O L. Lineal? You know what? I put in L I N E O L. And I've seen some figurines, some figures. But they're still going for 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Yeah. Here's three Luke Loft Ranch, something, 56 bucks. One vintage Lionel ground, 
25 bucks. They're not, they're not big money. Yeah. As a group, they, they're probably worth a couple hundred bucks, but individually, they're not really doing that much. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Have a good Thank day. Bye-bye. Okay, Barbara, how did you make out? Looks like you re-logged on. So if you can unmute. Okay. Do you hear me now? Perfect. We got you there, Barbara. Great. Oh, I went on my I went on my iPad instead of my laptop. Yep, we um, got you now. Go ahead. Um, I this is the case it's in. It's an alarm clock. Uh, it's a Swiss make. Uh, it used to be um, a good Swiss maker. Yeah, I don't know if he exists any, anymore. And the alarm clock looks like this. It's not running Pull it anymore. Away a little bit. You're too close. There we go. Back, pull back a little bit. You're too close. That's perfect. Keep it right there. Perfect. Sue, are you playing anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, I uh, antique Jaeger uh, Memovox travel pocket alarm travel, clock. It, Swiss a travel paper. alarm clock. Is that Swiss made? Yes, it is. Yes. I'm seeing a price they just sold it for $348 on eBay in oh. February, February 15th. Okay. And I'm seeing one, Sue, for October 2020, 125 bucks. A round one sold for 150, another round Jaeger sold for 200. So you got a pretty good piece there. Yeah. Oh, the I almost threw it away because it's not working. <laughs> you know what? If, if you wanted to sell it, you sell it at it as is. Most guys who buy these things are clock repair people anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. So where would I sell this? On eBay? eBay. And you describe it the best you can. Show them the front, show them the back, show them the maker name, tell them, you know, we've had it for 50 years. It doesn't seem to be working. That's the way we're selling it. Whatever it goes for, it goes for. But it, it would certainly be easier to ship than a tall case grandfather's clock or a cuckoo clock. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Barbara. Thank okay. you. Kirk. Kirk Kaufman. Kirk, are you there? There we go. I'm here. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're going to go right to eight o'clock, and I'm trying two things. I want to try another camera that I found. First of all, I can't see you. You're you're there's you're not going to you're not going to see me. That's the problem. Kind of tough because. to face something I can't see. Exactly. That's what I'm working on. So if you go to eight o'clock, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll be the last one. Okay, we'll come back. We won't leave without you. All Do right. You want to you. Uh, log off and no, log no, back Kirk, in. Let me just ask you, for what is it that you're looking for me? What are, you, what are you hoping I can appraise for you? Well, I really wanted to show you the uh, Yankee baseball that supposedly uh, it's got Babe Ruth's signature on it. came from my father's father. It was supposed to be a home run ball. And it had a lot of other signatures. I don't know who those people are. It's very old and yellow. I don't believe they signed group balls in those days. Okay, let's not even deal with that. I don't have to see this to give me I know, I know, that one's rough. The other thing is a uh, brass, uh, I don't know what you call it, it actually- No, let, no let's just stay with one thing now, okay? Because I'm not gonna do two things for you unless we do two for everybody. I know, but you're not gonna see the ball because you're I not gonna be able to tell. I'll tell you what I think. I'd love to show you the ball, but you're not going to be able to see it too good. So the brass thing, I think, is what I'm going to show you. I can't see the brass thing either. I know. And that's what I'm going to work on. So that's why you come to me at the end. Okay, we'll come back. Let's go. Somewhere. All right. We got it. Kirk, why don't you try logging off and logging back in again? That's what Barbara did, and that worked for her. Well, what it is maybe, is I took the... Maybe took switch the, your device. I took the camera from... Uh, another computer and it doesn't recognize the camera because I don't have the drivers. So now I'm trying a brand new camera in a box that has the drivers. So okay, well, while well, well, you're working on that, we'll just move on. And yeah, thank you so much. You. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, you bet. Right. Jay, do you have anything to show us uh, that you'd like appraised? Is that me? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> no, I actually, I don't, good. but. <laughs> We can go on to uh, somebody else, but thanks for okay. continuing. Um, Rosemary, um, are you there? I see you. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. 
Okay, so what I have is a painting that I inherited from my aunt. Um, let me just see if I can turn you around. Now that I know, hold on one moment. Okay, so this is the painting. Who is the artist? Rosemary? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's in the original frame. So it's from, one moment. It says on here, I think the, the artist was um, Hilaire. It's a 2005 Hilaire regatta is the, is the painting. It's in the original frame. And, and I don't know, I think this is just the name of the frame. I did see it, you know, I looked, I looked it up once. But is, not, is it not signed on the canvas? The there, you know what? It's the way they have this. Um, where is the signature? <laughs> I didn't really take it out of the frame, should I? No, oh, yeah. I mean, but I mean, there's Bruno Holaire, Camille Holaire, Fritz Holaire. Yes, Tyler that's. Holaire, I think Bartiz I think it's Holaire. Camille. Why do you think it's Camille? I think I looked it up once, and it's this painting. And I saw saying, I saw it online somewhere. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can open the last frame. Last name Hilaire. Hilaire, H I L A I R E, and it's a regatta. That's what the, the name of this painting let's is. See, I, let me see the front again. Sure. Front of last name. Step back. I mean the the Camille Hilaire I'm looking at. And I'm on uh, Asgard Sue. It's all modern art. Too. And I guess that's a certain type of modern art, but uh, there is a, for Camille Hilaire, they have sold over 1,300 of Camille's artworks. Okay. When, when I looked when I looked it up, I had seen that this painting was sold in Connecticut. It said last sold in Connecticut. And my aunt did live. She lived in Armonk, Greenwich, Connecticut. That's where she lived. And she did like to buy art. So all right, here's what I would advise you to do. If it is Camille, I am not telling you it is, but if it's Camille Hilaire. Born 1916, died 2004, was active and lived in France and Germany. Okay. Now, I'm not telling you that this is, this is Camille. You're the one who's telling me it's Camille. But the, the okay. description here, the, 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 the timeline fits, 2000, 1916 to 2004. That canvas would fit within there. Uh, doesn't say here anything about Camille Hilaire living in the US, not saying he or she did or did not. Right. Uh, known for abstract genre, landscape and city scene paintings. That's kind of what we have here. It's more of an abstract regatta, not <coughs> a traditional type. Not really if it is Camille Hilaire, they've, this artist has sold for as much as $22,600. Look at me right now. I am not telling you yours is worth $22,600. Right, I know. I'm telling you this artist has sold for that much. Uh, some recent prices for this artist. Uh, I should. There's a bunch that are coming up right now that, that are not there. Uh, Did you specifically see this painting? No, because I I did. See, okay, but I don't have in, in two or three minutes time. I don't, right. can't go through thirteen hundred. Are you right. interested in selling or insuring it? Um, probably insuring it first, and then who knows, maybe selling it okay. at some point. What I would advise you to do is get in touch with Shannon Auction Galleries in Connecticut. Okay. I think they're uh, Greenwich. I think they're right around there. Shannon Auction Galleries. They specialize in art. Okay. Send them a picture, see if they can help you out with it. Would they be interested in selling it? Uh, what would the pre-auction estimate be? Okay. They may tell you it's not Camille. I can't tell you either way. Right. But that's the best advice I can give you on a painting that I can't hold, touch, feel, or see. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank I you so hope, much. I hope you hit a home run, and I hope you get more than the auction record for it. 
Yay. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rosemary. All right, Melissa. Uh, I'm just watching. Thank you. You what? Sorry. Just just watching. Oh, OK, great. Thanks. Uh, how about Crystal and Jason Brand? Hello. Hi. So my husband has this gunmetal flask. It's the Huckleberry Indian, it says, um, from April of 1909. It says, let's bury it. And I have a newspaper article here. It says that it was um, a souvenir of an annual dinner that they had in 1909. And in reference to burying the hatchet was made Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So it's a souvenir from 1909, or yes. it's a souvenir, a current contemporary souvenir of a dinner that occurred in 1909. Given out in 1909. And what exactly yeah, is a dinner? I think it's the New York Athletic. New York Athletic. What athletic exactly is it again? It's a gunmetal flask. Okay. Let's bury the hatchet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to just take a flyer here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to help you out with that or not. I am going into Google Images. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. I have seen a bunch of it. Have you gone? Have you done that yet? Have you been into Google Images? Oh me, no. All right. Here is something. Uh, it's it's marked. Let's bury it. Yeah. Okay. Not bury the hatch. Let's bury it. Okay. It's a let's bury it wedge shaped vintage hip flask. They're asking thirty five bucks on it. Oh man. Okay. No, we're not done yet. Let me just let me go back. There's because there's some others. Sue, are you seeing anything there? Not yet. All right, this is now taking me to this point. Now here's a similar one. Rare unusual hatchet is your pewter? Um, is it pewter? I think yeah, I guess. Okay, this one sold for 125 bucks in 2016. Okay. Anything else, Sue? <laughs> this no, one's a couple of others, too. There's one on Pinterest. So what you want to do is go to put in Google. I put in let's bury, I put let's bury the hatchet. Let's let's bury a metal flask. And then go to Google Images and back into it that way. And you'll see uh, probably five or six of them, maybe more if you look further down. So fair market value, I'd say $50 to $75. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, Jay, do you want to, uh, for the folks that are remaining, should we go around again? I mean, Jay, it's 7.30. I don't think we're going to get through everybody in 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we will get through everybody in 30 minutes. I don't know if, if you want to do a few people. I don't know if Kurt was able to get a uh, video. I, don't know he's, I know he's still here. Um, Here's the problem I have with, I don't mind doing them. I just don't want anybody getting mad at me if we don't get to them for the second one. <laughs> Although you won't get mad at me, they're not mad at you. <laughs> How about this? Why don't we do a show of hands? Yeah. How many people have a second item? <laughs> How much everybody? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'll, Jay, tell you what. I'll do a second item, but I'm not going to give you any stories. You hold it up. I'll give you a number. <laughs> How does that sound to everybody? Give a thumbs up if that works. I don't want anybody getting mad at us. <laughs> all right. And we all, if you give a thumbs up, if you're not going to get mad at us. Or, or let me, don't get mad at us tonight. You can get mad at Jay. That's all right. 
Because I would like to leave 10 minutes for Q&As. Okay. Okay. Sue, you want me to just call them out? You want to do it? Um, keep well, holding I, it. I was just going to go. I mean, it's up to you. No, go ahead. That, that's all right. We're going to go real quick, guys. I'll just go in the order of the grid that I see here. Uh, let's go with Ellen. Could you go to someone before me, please? I have to go get the item. Oh, sure. Thank All you. Right. Um, Ellen, we'll, uh, you go ahead and do that. Uh, Sandra, did you okay. have something else? You got to unmute yourself, Sandra. There you go. It's like a large serving platter. And it, I think this is like metal here, china here. Looks like aluminum. It's not sterling silver. <laughs> No, I, I don't believe it is. No. $20. Okay. That was relatively common, probably dates from the 40s or 50s. Fair market value, $20, $25. Thank you. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, Michelle, do you have something else? Um, I have a sterling silver spoon from Havana. And it says sterling on it. You know it's sterling? It does. It 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 says it says sterling and it says H I E R R O Y C I A. I don't know what that means. Okay, right now And then uh, there's a picture of a hut. It says native hut on it. Okay, right now silver is about twenty seven and a half dollars an ounce. You have approximately one ounce of silver. Uh Scrap value of that is about 20 bucks. I'm going to say fair, fair market value is 25 to $35 if you were to sell it to a retail buyer. Let me fast question. I have some for like Puerto Rico and different states. Would it be the same price of, in general? In general? Pretty, much, pretty much because of the, the beauty is if you have glass, you drop a dish, it shatters, you have not, no value. Sterling, you always have the scrap value. But Sue and I have quite a few sterling spoons. And we're not finding many buyers for them on eBay. There's exceptions, but most of them aren't selling. But yeah, at least you have the scrap value. Okay, so what's the highest again? Um, what's the price? 25 to 35. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Next up. Okay, I'm Laura. Laura Rossi. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, and Laura's mom. Okay. The other way. What are you showing me there? Back her up a little bit. Is that a, is that a net ski? I have no idea what it is. Does it have little holes in it in the back? No, there's no holes. It has glass eyes, though. Well, what's it made of? Wood. Okay. If it's wood, it's not a Netsky. Netskis were generally made of ivory. Uh, they, were, they were little figurines, hand carved, that were carried on uh, a belt. Uh, this is a decorative piece, probably in the $25 to $50 range. Uh, unless there's a maker name on it. My, my no guess is this was probably some type, unless you tell me a different story, it was probably some type of tourist memento that was brought back from someone who went overseas. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Nesky, put Nesky there. Um, Ellen, are you ready? Okay, great. You go ahead. Thank you. Um, this is a... Um, uh, porcelain, I guess, pitcher, again, hand-painted and signed. This time the artist is W. Hannert, H-A-N-N-E-R-T, and it, it, after that says 03, which I believe 1903, this was a, um, a wedding gift to my grandparents, so it. Who is the maker name? Is there a maker name on the underside? Hannert. I think she said that was the artist, Sue. That's the artist. Limoges TNV. T ampersand V. Yes. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Is, is Limoges a factory or is the Limoges a town? It says Limoges, France. I'm asking you a question. Is Limoges a factory? You think is Limoges a factory or is Limoges a town? I wrote a column on this one time. No, no one knows. Everybody says we got Limoges, but Limoges is a town in France. And in Limoges, over three or four centuries, there were literally hundreds of porcelain manufacturers. And the largest and best known was Haviland. Okay, we many people have heard of Haviland. 
Okay, this is T and V. Sue, where are you at there? I'm just looking in eBay. Okay, I'm in Google here. T and V, I'm seeing a, a tall picture such as yours for $61. Huh. Um, That's, she's, she's right on there. Um, all right, here, you want to write this down, Ellen, real quick? You have a pencil? Yep. T and V stands for Tressman, T R E S S E M A N N. Tressman and V O G T, vote. Okay. So, what you're going to have to do is some do some homework. Uh, right now, I'm looking at something on Ruby Lane. It says Antique Limoges. France, Esserman and Vote, TNV, artists signed something. So that's what you got. Uh, so the retail value on this thing would be $150, $250. But Sue's giving you the selling price, what they're selling for. Big right. difference sometimes. Not in high demand today. Quality piece, though. Very nice. Fair market okay. value, $125. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I think we're going to make it, buddy. I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> Paul, go ahead. Awesome. Uh, these are paintings. Can you see them? Yeah. They're paintings from Thailand. They're about 50 years old. They're hand painted. They're about 28, I'm going to guess, 28 by 32, something like that. Any known artist? Paul, uh, any I old? don't know who the artist is, no. All right, you're gonna to have to get a second opinion on them, but my opinion right now is if they're 50 years old or 1970s, not that old. No. Uh, we don't know the artist. In my world, uh, throw away every art book that's ever been written. There's only two types of art. There's collectible art, and most people collect the artist, the artist name, the type right. of art, the location, et cetera. Everything else is decorative. Mm -hmm. This strikes me as a decorative Asian piece. It's even got a more modern right. look. Uh, so fair market value, how many of them do you have? Three. Okay. Do they all have the faux bamboo frames? Uh, yeah. Insurance replacement costs, uh, 125 a piece. Uh, oh, okay. liquidation value, 25 to $50 each. Hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Um, Mary Grace, do you have something else for us? Yes, uh, it's the um, it's a, a ration book. Sorry, um, a ration book from my uh, my grandfather. Okay, World War One, World War Two. Well, I'm sorry, World War Two, World War Two. Okay, Sue, I'm going to just do a Google. You want to do eBay, Sue? Rachel. Sure. How many are coming up, Sue, on eBay? Well, there's it's showing 186, but they're not uh, for what um, Mary Grace has. I, I'm seeing some, you know, uh, books and and papers. It looks like just aren't, you know, some of it's just uh, stamps. With the, with the stamps in it. Okay, so it was hand stamped. So I have a, you know, $30. Um, some of the individual papers have gone for as little, I mean, 99 cents, unfortunately. I'm probably not looking to sell it, just, just yeah. what it would be, Is it you know. Family members, Mary Grace? Yes. My okay. grandfather and my pet and my mother and my grandmother and my uncle. Yep. And so what you have to understand is millions of those things existed during World War II. Racial sure. was all over the place. And I agree with what Sue was saying here. I'm in Worth Point right now. And just in 2020, $10, $5, $32 for four, $12 for three, $10. So you seem to be in that $10 range just because okay. they're so common. No, I was going to hold on to them. I was just curious. Thank well, family, you. Family history, they're great. They're perfect. All okay. right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Philip. Go ahead and unmute. 
Hey, thanks. I have a question. I have in my office, it's a, what I think is a print. Um, I'm going to describe it to you. I mean, it's, it's a picture by William Allen Wall. Spell it's that word. Huh? Spell the last name. Wall, W-A-L-L. -L. Okay. And it's called View of Barnstable because it's on display at a museum, Addison Gallery. Well, it sounds like it would be Cape Cod. Right, it's Barnstable, Massachusetts. It's a like a colonial picture. It's on my wall, and I think it's a print. But the 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 when you look at the print and the the sun is on it, it's like textured. The uh, you know the picture is it's very pretty. I like it, but it's it's like a texture to it. And it, the frame, which is like a white outline on the outside, the texture goes through that frame also, that that white part. And it's in a wonderful, it's in a nice wood frame. And I'm wondering what exactly that is. It says on the back, uh, Barnstable and, and Wall on it, handwritten on the back, but there's no signature on the front. See, I'm not seeing anything though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's I'm, I'm in right now if this was an original artwork william allen wall he was right. born in 1801 died in 1885 so we're talking 19th century does that make sense right yeah that's the one i that's the picture i, I have a picture of the picture okay yeah. now let me just stop you there his artwork his original artwork is sold for as much as forty five thousand dollars prints right. are worth a fraction of that so right. are you finding anything on eBay, Sue? Well, I'm finding there's this is William Allen, not William Archibald, right? William Allen Wall. Uh nothing that's um really, yeah. I found more on William Archibald. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's 1801 to 1885. 19, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not finding much on the prints. Uh, are the true, are the prints numbered? Are they numbered? No, there's no number. Uh, well, I don't, I didn't take it out of the frame. Right, here, here's what you got to do. Phil, yeah. you have to get yourself a loop. I don't know if you can see this, a, a 10 power loop. Hold right. it over the print. If you see thousands of little symmetrical dots, it's an offset lithograph print, dime a dozen. That means there were there were runs of 10,000. If you don't see those dots, there's a good chance it's a lithographic print. Is it black and white or hand colored? It's colored. It's it's color. Check it out. If it's offset lithograph, it's decorative, it's gonna be not, it's gonna be 25 bucks. If it if, if it had a number. 10 slash 500 that would mean it's a limited edition print but you're not describing that to me so it sounds to me like it's an open edition print meaning they as they could would it be numbered on the back no it'd be right underneath usually lower left and he was signed lower right so i'm going to guess it's an offset lithographic print i'm going to say 50 bucks but get a second opinion on okay. it check it with that loop would they have a texture to it if it's an offset Everyone's different. The paper was different. Everything was different. I can't tell you based on what I'm not seeing here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Crystal and Jason. Okay. Okay. Hi again. Um, I have the swagger stick, I guess, from one of the world wars. It, it, it's wooden and it's got sterling silver on the top and the bottom. It looks small. Huh? It's, so it's not yeah. a cane, right? No, it's like, it's like a burglar beater. Yeah, about maybe two feet. Yeah, yeah. So they carried that. It was uh, Swagger Sticks, a good name for it. And somebody came and roughed them up. They pop them over the head with the end of it. That's really what it was. And it is sterling. Yeah, it says sterling on here. Uh, fair market value, uh, one hundred twenty-five dollars. The sterling is what makes it valuable. There are still people who collect walking sticks and Swagger Sticks. I just read a great article. There's an 80 year old man, 81 year old man, who was walking with his cane, and some guy came and tried to attack him. He beat the crap out of him with his cane, and he won. The 81 year old guy, he won. 
So, so canes still serve a purpose. This is too small, but a lot of these canes had the dagger in there, the knife. Okay, so I don't think that's going to pull out. If it pulls out, you may have a knife from the top. From the top. No. Okay, so some of them had knives in there for protection as well. This is a very common form of self-defense in the 1800s. But the fact that Sterling means it's a better piece was probably owned by a wealthier person because the average guy would have just had a wooden uh, swagger stick. Okay? Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, Barbara. Did I, oh, there you are. Yeah, um, I have this, uh, can you see it? It's gold plated. Can you, can you see it? Barbara? It's like a, a sculpture or, and I can show you the name. Can you read, read it? it? I cannot read it. Can you read it to me? Okay. It's made by Herbert Schedler. S C H E D L S C H E D L E R. Herbert was his first name. Herbert. And Herbert, right. Okay. And it's a bronze. A bronze, gilded bronze, and it's called Ostinato. O S T I N A T O. I am finding nothing in worth point, so. Ostinato. No, just. I'm not finding anything on Google even. Herbert Shedler, S C H E D L E R. Correct. I got to admit, I can't find anything. Uh, anything on eBay, Sue? No. I mean, so this uh, suggests to me, get a second opinion on it. But if mm -hmm. we can't find it in Worth Point, if we can't find it in eBay, we can't find it in Google, it, it's, it's not a mass collected type of piece. Okay. Uh, who knows what it is. But I'm going to say, I don't even want to throw out a value because I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm just okay. telling you that neither of us found anything on the internet. So uh, do a little more homework in it. Try, here's what I want, want you to do. Go into Google, mm -hmm. put in the various spellings, and then go into Google images. Mm -hmm. We did this earlier. That's how I found that, that flask. And then you yeah. find something that looks just like that, and then you back into it that way. That's a good way okay. to do it. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Rosemary, do you have uh, something else? Go ahead and unmute. Okay. Okay, this is a fair family heirloom. It's a, it's a marble and bronze table with a clock, marble clock. The clock is a brass movement. I know it's Ansonia, New York is where it was made. Um, and it's really ornate. You know, I think this is the Roman goddess Minerva. I've, I've, you know, through the years I found things <laughs> on this. And I, this sorry. is a quality piece. This came out of a wealthy home. This was not a poor person's piece of furniture. Um, it was my, it was my grandfather's who was way, way, way well over a hundred years. Oh yeah, this, this is 1800s. Yeah. You're looking to sell it? You're looking to insure it? What are you looking to do? Uh, I guess insure it. I, it's not something I can sell. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, fair market value, 2000 bucks. I mean, it's a quality piece. Is okay. the clock attached to it or is it just look? No, it's separate. Okay. It's separate. I mean, the clock is five, 600 bucks. The table, uh, I mean, see, here's the, here's the problem. Uh -huh. This is the kind of table you could put in Lamberville or New Hope, and you could price it at $3,500. And they're waiting for you or me to come in and say, I fell in love with it. I'll pay what you got or I'll negotiate with you. Okay. <laughs> the asking price is a huge different than what you're going to get for it as a non dealer. Okay. But to me, easily, fair market value, I can easily praise that $2,500. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. It's it just because it's quality. It's, it's, there's not many of them around there. 
And that's not the kind of table you want to sell quickly. You want to wait for the right person to come there's, Yeah, there's even, there's a marble pedestal that goes with it that my sister has. So okay. it was, a, it was another piece that went to it too. Well, congratulations. I mean, it's a really sweet piece. Not Thank necessarily you. my cup of tea, but there's a lot of people who would aspire to own that because it is quality and everybody wants the best of the best. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, Kirk, it looks like we have you. Just go ahead and unmute. Yeah, it took me a while. I don't know. Here can't we get to focus too well, but uh, anyway, this thing is a uh, solid brass. It probably weighs about seven or 10 pounds. And I don't know what it's called, but they used to crush up the uh, pharmacist years ago. Kurt, I got to be honest, all I'm seeing is your face and shoulders. Yeah. I don't see anything. Can you see it now? Okay, it's a mortar pestle. Mortar okay. pestle, grass. Right. Very heavy. Very heavy. <laughs> exactly. $75. Yeah, I can't yeah. even find any, I can't find any markings on name on it at all. Yeah, they, they're usually not. Uh, it's yeah. it's it's a, probably was owned by a pharmacist at some point. There's a fair number of them out there. You'll see that $150, $200 in a shop. Fair okay. market value, let's say $75 to $100. Okay, thank you so much. Did you order the baseball too? You uh, the first item. I know that. I can get the baseball. I'm just the Babe Ruth signature is so faint. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it well. Okay, it um, doesn't matter. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Okay. There's a there's a place auction house in uh, New Jersey called Golden G O L D E N. Golden. Okay. Yep. They're a, they specialize in baseball stuff. Okay. That's where you want to take that or start with the internet or something like that, sending them pictures. You will, okay. the baseball market is hot. Babe Ruth is hot. Yeah. But Babe Ruth's signature is fake quite a bit too. So you need someone right. who knows the market, who can guarantee that that signature is right. Okay. If Kirk or Mike put that on eBay, people are going to say, who are these guys? How do I know it's right? Mm -hmm. When it's being sold by a reputable auction house that guarantees that signature to be correct, people will then bid with confidence. You. That's how you... That, that's how auctioneers earn their commission. They're There's a lot of other signatures on it too, which is curious. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Very good, sir. Okay, Melissa. Do you have something else? Oh, you were watching. Right? Are yep. we done? Thank you. Um, Michelle, did we miss anybody, we, Sue? Michelle, did we see you for the second time? Yes, you did. Yes. Okay. Well, then I think we've uh, covered everybody. For Jamie, one anybody, or two. anybody have any questions? Murano glass, that's from Italy. Um, I know there's different ways to tell when it's really genuine and it has to say Murano glass. Does it really hold its value or is it worth sometimes the crazy prices they have or not? It's a fine line. Murano glass is often called a Venetian glass. It's usually heavy. It's not always marked. A lot of times it was marked with a foil label and the foil label came off. It it just all depends on what you've got. Sometimes they're multicolors. Sometimes they're end of the day glass. There's all different kinds of Murano glass. Murano, from what I understand, was an island right off of Venice. Okay. And they just, they specialize in glass for a long period of time. Everything, like I said earlier, if they if it's a desirable piece, a lot of people will want it. If an average piece, not that many people will want it. 50 to 100 bucks, it could be 500 or or $1,000 more. All depends on what it is. So it's- Could I show you one more thing? Nope. No, okay. That wouldn't be fair. I, you know, you know, I didn't know. what you do. Hammer yes. Jay to bring me back in the fall and then I can look at more things from everybody. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just, Rosemary, I just don't want to be fair to the others, unfair to the others. Right. But I'll take a question from you as long as it's not, the value on one specific item. Okay. <laughs> Just an ant, like really, really old antique dragon dogs from Italy. That kind of a, that kind of a statue. What is anybody going to do with it? You know, I don't know. 200, 300 years old. Uh, if it's sat inside a palace, if there's something special about it, yes. If it's, it's just- in my palace. <laughs> <laughs> Answer. Yeah, but just the general piece it is, it is what it is. It's it's, it's a photograph. What's hot today, guys? If you got any 
good coins can do very well today. Uh, comic books are hot today. If you have your kids' comic books, DC Comics, Marvel comic books are hot today. But they got to be the older ones, not the newer ones. Video games are starting to come back. We collect what we grew up with. Uh, not long ago, well, you're sure, yeah, we actually was a while. It was a few years ago. I had my grandkids on the radio show, and we played the what's uh, we played the future young collectors game. And I asked them, "Who's Justin Bieber? Who's Justin Timberlake? Who's Taylor Swift?" And they knew. I said, "Who's Shirley Temple?" I don't know. And they were ten or twelve at the time. Who's John Wayne, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And my message was, we collect what we grew up with. And Shirley Temple is going to go down because that was my mother's generation, not my, not my grandkids' generation. So keep in mind in terms of what you got there, does it appeal to the younger generation? If so, it can go up in value. If not, is it cross-generational? Musical instruments are cross-generational in most cases. The younger generation likes music, we like music. Younger generation could care less about Victorian match safes. They could care less about so many other things that we collected. So that's going to be the key to value condition and whether the younger generation is interested in it. Anybody else? How about uh, bicycles, uh, Mike? What's um, that? Bicycles like the balloon toys. I got a lot I of antique bikes. Yes, we got you, run. Run. you said bicycles. Bi bicycles, yeah. yeah. Okay, it depends Twins. on when. Yeah. The guy who you who the, the country's leading authority or auction house on bicycles is Mike Fallon up in New York State. He's on the Hudson River region. Cope, a Cope country auctions. He has a couple bicycle sales a year. He gets top dollar for bikes. Uh, but you know, you're not gonna get that much money for a bone crusher. The bone crusher with those big wheels in the front and little wheels in the back. Yeah, you know, they're they're five hundred to a thousand dollars, maybe a little bit more. But there's certain other bikes. Stingrays were hot for a while. I'm not sure if they're still hot. Yeah, I got one of those orange crates. Those those ones from like 1969. Yeah, yeah. So those kind of things can be hot, uh, but you the, if you're going to get top dollar for that, you need to sell it with an expert, and he's the expert in that. You don't send the the lower, the last question, ladies and gentlemen, you want to ask an auctioneer is what is what's your commission? That's an important question. But that's the last thing you ask, not the first thing you ask. Because if you're going to get top dollar at auction, you're going to sell for somebody who's an expert at what they do and who has a strong following for what you're selling. You wouldn't want to sell your, your dolls at a tool auction. You wouldn't want to sell your tools at a doll auction. So you wouldn't want to sell your bicycles at a glass auction because there's no, there's no bike buyers there. That's how you get top dollar. Anyone else? Jay, man, look at the time. We are right, right at the. I know, at... pretty good. <laughs> you mentioned uh, antique dolls. What about antique dolls? How are they doing? It depends on what you have. You know, the earlier dolls can generally do pretty well. Condition means everything. If you have a French brew, if you got the uh, French brew, if you mm -hmm. have the German uh, Simon Halbig and some of those other German names from the late 1800s, they can do pretty well. Would you like to buy some Madame Alexander dolls in original box? Soon I have about a hundred in the garage that we can't sell. Okay. You know, there's a common dolls. There are diamond dozen. Certain Madame yeah. Alexanders are like homo figurines today. You can't give away. There's just too many out there. That's true. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but uh, if you sell your dolls, you'll do better generally selling them at a doll auction. And just because your antique doll has a crushed up head, doesn't mean it's valueless because they oftentimes sell dolls at doll auctions as body parts. That's what they sometimes started as. Yeah. So just because, and this doesn't mean it's not Barbies or things like that, but the old dolls, if the head's crushed, well, a doll doctor may buy the body that has the arms and the legs and they'll put another head on it and they'll sew it up and put it up together. They still have value. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank, thank you. you so much for uh, attending. Mike, you, Mike, thank you so much for this appraisal. I think it was uh, very informative, and I'm sure everyone that attended uh, appreciated your time. Thanks for being here, Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, All right. Jay. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you.